Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? So I am here checking out the electric mountain bike. <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> so I'm actually here in Pennsylvania in a portion of Neshaminy Park. And it's actually made a pretty good mountain bike path here. I mean, it's not terribly aggressive, but it's along the river, the Delaware River. You got this nice forested area up all over. I mean, it's it's very green. It's, it's very pretty out here. Anyways, I'm really happy to be out here because I got a really cool bike to show you. So this is from Electric Bike Technologies. They're here in Pennsylvania. They actually got a couple of brands going on. Uh, this one is from uh, the electric bike store, uh, which are starting up to sell this, which is uh, the electric mountain bike. And they also have some other ones. So they're kind of going a very direct route with their <laughs> nomenclature. So this is uh, the electric mountain bike. They have an electric city bike, but I'm kind of getting aside for myself. So let's just go ahead and jump in and tell you what this bike is all about. So this bike, as you can tell, is an electric mountain bike. And that's what it says right on the side, mountain bike well, mountain. So this is an electric mountain bike that is made for, uh, really a trail like this is actually a pretty good uh, design for it. Uh, so it's meant for something that can go off-road on something that is, this one is actually relatively, you know, casual. This bike I'd say would go on something a little bit more heavy than this if you wanted to. This bike is a hardtail, so it's got a suspension up in the front uh, with a nice 27.5 knobby tires and it has the, the battery and the motor in the middle uh, for a mid-drive motor with a mid-mounted battery. So the balance of the bike is actually pretty good too. And those are some pretty basic things about the electric mountain bike and kind of what make it good. You're in a little bit of a forward riding position. You know, the seat kind of comes up a little high. The handlebars are straight, so you kind of go up to meet them. So so this gives you a lot of control, it gives you a lot of feedback on your hands so that you can adjust your riding position as you go over obstacles. So that's kind of the basics of the electric mountain bike. Let's go ahead and jump in and talk about the specifications. Uh, let's start up at the front of the bike. Uh, so the first thing uh, that you'll notice is the knobby tires. Uh, so these are, these are some Kenda tires. These are 27 by 2.3. Uh, so it's what you would now consider a conventional mountain bike size. <laughs> mountain bike tires have a, a way of changing uh, faster than lottery numbers. Uh, but this one is pretty good. I mean, it's very, um, what's the word, like customary. You know, no one's going to feel out of place by riding a mountain bike with tires about this size. They're 27.5, meaning they're 27 and a half for the diameter and 2.3 for the width with some pretty good knobs on here. You can see that I've kind of started to eat up a little bit of the sand and a little bit of the terrain here while we're biking around. That's exactly what these tires are made for, to give you a good set of grip with a nice wide profile uh, so you can keep control on the bike, especially at high speeds. You know, when you're making a turn, they got this tread even on the outside. You see it's not terribly utilized for a lot of what I've been doing, but if you take a tight turn, that's where these kind of grip in and you can get a little more traction uh, on the road. Uh, so kind of real quick, you do have a 13 gauge spoke with a double walled uh, eyelet rim uh, right here coming into the RST Alpha front fork. Uh, so this is a coil over uh, front fork uh, that has 110 millimeters of travel uh, up on the front. Uh, a lot of forks will have 100 millimeters. This one has 110. So like Spinal Tap, they're cranking it up to 11. Uh, so on the crown of the fork, you have a preload and a lockout adjustment on either end uh, of the fork. You can actually reach down and grab it pretty easy. That would be used if you wanted to add a little bit of tension to it to kind of lock it out. Say if you're like riding on the road and you just want things to be nice and efficient without it compressing too much. Uh, so that's kind of the fork and kind of its, uh, its orientation. There's not a whole lot of mounting points uh, on here. There are a little bit for the fenders down here and you can get it up to the crown if you wanted to. Uh, but that's something a local bike shop would definitely help you out with if you wanted to accessorize this. It is ready for that. Sometimes you'll see mounting points on the side, but this one keeps it fairly streamlined. Uh, so while we're up here, let's talk a little bit about the brakes. Uh, so we're looking at uh, hydraulic disc brakes, uh, dual piston from Tektro. These are called the Ariga. Um, and they're pretty good. I actually had a bike like this for many years that I really enjoyed the brakes on. Uh, these are a 180 millimeter rotor uh, up on the front. So how they operate is that this uh, caliper will has pads inside that will grab that rotor and stop the bike. And I like them a lot. You know, disc brakes are something that, in my opinion, are pretty necessary on a lot of electric bikes. Only on rare occasions would I uh, go for something with the, the V brake. 
Uh, they're pretty few and far between. Most of the time you want to see disc brakes. So I think this is a really good choice. I like these ones a lot. They actually last a long time. And that's kind of one difference between uh, hydraulic brakes and mechanical disc brakes is that mechanical disc brakes, they work, you know, they're good, but you do have to babysit them a little bit more. But the other side of that is that they're not nearly as difficult to maintain. <laughs> so with the hydraulic brakes, I, you know, I know them and I love them. I've used them for years. When you do have to fix them, they do require some special tools. You'll probably be visiting a bike shop to get that done. Personally, I did <laughs> for myself. Uh, so that's one thing to consider uh, when you're choosing a bike and choosing the brake set. So yeah. Okay, so coming back up from the bike, uh, the cabling is actually routed pretty well. Uh, you do have this nice wire loom that's coming in from the from the frame of the bike, kind of grabbing onto this area up here that's kept, kept together with like this little zipper of, of a casing right here. That's pretty good because it keeps things uh, nice and simple. You don't have to worry about 10 cables coming out and spider manning all over the place. You kind of keep everything nice and tight in there. Makes it look really good, but it also serves a functional purpose as you're doing some fairly aggressive riding. You know, you can kind of turn the handlebars without 10 wires coming into contact. It also keeps the frame nice. Every now and again, you'll see a wire that rubs up against the frame and then it causes some long-term, we're talking like years, long-term kind of fading on the paint. I mean, it's not a hard thing, especially for this matte black. It would be easy to match if you wanted to you know, do some touch-up paint for it. But nonetheless, that's a nice thing, you know, a nice little consideration that they've got. And up here, uh, I saw it earlier at the shop, but this has the disconnects. Let's see if we can kind of open it up a little bit. So inside of here, you have some quick disconnects, which is a pretty cool thing because they're accessible if you wanted to change out uh, one of these parts or if you had something that needed some service. So I'm actually here with Alec. You probably saw him in some of the other videos talking about the other bikes from Electric Bike Technologies. Uh, so they're here in Pennsylvania and they can actually help you out with any of the service needs that you have, which is pretty cool. So if you have a display that's not functioning properly or if you want the throttle perhaps is giving you a little bit of grief, you can actually call these guys right up and talk to them about it and they can help you switch out those parts pretty easily. As you can see, it's just a plug and play kind of thing. You don't have to get any kind of special tools to pry them open or anything like that. So. All right, the brake levers, I didn't talk too much about the brake levers. Uh, so the brake levers, I would call that, I guess, a three finger uh, brake lever, meaning you need three fingers to kind of grab a hold of that. You could get a fourth. Uh, yeah, I guess I'd say four. Uh, the other ones are a little taller. They're almost like a five finger. <laughs> that'd be I mean, quite the uh, fun thing to do, but these ones are nice and long, so you can get a good grip on there. Uh, they do have the electric uh, system inside of them, so that's part of the uh, name convention where they're called the Tektro Riga E-Comp, and the E-Comp is for their electric uh, cutoff switch uh, that kind of runs through the actual housing for the brake lever, kind of goes through into the controller. So what that does when you press on the brakes, that has a small little internal section here that changes so that when you pull on the brakes, that sends a signal to cut off power to the motor so that you're never using the motor at the same time that you're trying to stop the bike. So it's a safety mechanism uh, that's quite common and it's pretty good. You know, I'm glad they have it. Uh, the shifter is pretty nice. Uh, I like this shifter quite a bit. This is the Shimano Alivio derailleur coming up to the trigger shifter uh, up here. So you can press your thumb in on one side to make it lower or squeeze that trigger to increase uh, the gears. Uh, which is pretty good. This is a really nice indexer. It's very sharp, very precise, which is exactly what you'd want on a mountain bike. You want something to just boom, instantly boom, shift gears and you're ready to go. There are the shifters that have like a little bit more leeway. They're a little more comfortable, say like in even a new Vinci is kind of one on the far end of that spectrum. Those ones aren't so good for mountain biking because you need things immediate. You need things quick so you can adjust your riding style and your riding position and your weight and everything as you're overcoming the trail kind of, you know, bracing the challenge, you want things to work. Um, so these grips are quite an interesting choice here. Um, so they do have a lock on mechanism, which is this black ring right here. So it does lock into position. So you don't have to worry about the grip itself kind of rotating or sliding over time, uh, which I really like a lot. These are kind of an ergonomic grip. I shouldn't say kind of, these are totally an ergonomic grip in which it extends out like a solid cylinder and then widens out on the bottom to kind of place onto your palm. So that kind of lowers fatigue as you're riding, especially for long durations. But they also chose to have a horn uh, on the side, which kind of extends up. Now, typically you don't see this on a lot of mountain bikes. You might see it on like a touring bike meant for long distance. 
Uh, but Alec, maybe you can kind of tell me a little bit about uh, the selection for that horn on the grips. Yeah, absolutely. So this is part of not only our personal preference, but our contact with our customers that's coming through here. Uh, these bar ends and the ergonomic grip shape let you do two things. Um, so let's say that you're getting on in years a little bit. It's been a while since you've ridden a mountain bike or you're transitioning to a more easy mountain bike. This guy is going to reduce the pain in your hands a little bit. Um, and personally, I experienced this as well. I have numbness in my hands. And so being able to get a second hand position lets you change the stress points to reduce pain on your ulnar nerve, that kind of thing. So you can put your hands here, but you can also have a secondary position in order to mix up where the pressure is and reduce pain. And then this can help when you're climbing out of the saddle when you're doing like a nice slow hill climb. All right, so let's continue on talking about the controls on the cockpit area. Uh, so that's your, your grips, you know, you got the brakes, the the derailleur or rather the indexer for the derailleur the electric system is also located up here we'll get to that in a minute i did want to talk a little bit about the handlebars themselves they are pretty darn straight there's a tiny bit of back sweep i'd say maybe five degrees coming back to kind of meet your hand just a little bit and of course it starts out fairly thick and then thins out towards the end by and large this is a straight handlebar I mean, in all reality, it's a straight bar. So I definitely wouldn't call this a cruiser, <laughs> which is exactly what you want on a mountain bike. You want something to be kind of forward, get your weight into the game a little bit so you can control the total of the vehicle much better. Uh, so they do have an adjustable stem on the bike as well. Uh, that's this little part right here. So this extends out from you know the center of the headset here and the fork. So this extends out, but it also has a adjustment point. So if you use a five millimeter tool, you can pop that in there, loosen it up, and you can actually rotate on that axis here where the handlebars are. So if you do want them to kind of come out and kind of rake back to you, you can actually adjust that there on the fly, use a tool, tighten it up again, you're ready to rock. You can also, of course, uh, use the end of the stem here, open up those two a little bit, and you can actually kind of rotate the handlebars on that axis as well. So that way you're not pulling them all the way back and then having the brakes come up too. So you got like this, you know, hello fun sort of hand position. You can rotate it back to meet something a little more realistic. Uh, so continuing on with the frame. So this frame is a mountain bike frame, of course. And on this one, it has the top two coming, coming up all the way down into the seat stays. And that of course is for some added rigidity. In a lot of cases, you'll see like a little cutout here for a step through. And the standover height on this is relatively high uh, as a result. Uh, so if you want something that's like a step through mountain bike, then this one is not gonna fit the bill, uh, but it's certainly strong. So this bike can handle a little bit more abuse than say something that has a little bit less of a tubing uh, throughout the frame. And yeah, this also makes for a pretty good aesthetic line, you know, coming up all the way from the top and then all the way back down into the rear set of gears. Uh, it makes for a really compelling look to it as well. I like the matte black. <laughs> matte black is one of my favorites with a little bit of a gloss for the lettering that you have there. So uh, while we're down here, we can talk a little bit about the pedals and the cranks. Uh, there's not too much going on here that's not uh, common with the other bikes from these guys. They have a metal Welgo pedal, uh, one of my favorites, nice metal core with a metal for the bridge and also for the platform itself with the pins, reflectors built in, 170 millimeter cranks coming into uh, the front chain ring, which remind me, is this a 38 tooth? A uh, 36 tooth here. Okay, 36 tooth uh, front chain ring. So that's 30, 36 little teeth on here and you have a one-sided kind of bash guard or pant guard. So this prevents the chain from getting beat up as you're riding around in some fairly aggressive terrain. And that of course is coming back through the chain into the rear set of gears. And this is an 11 to 34 uh, set of gears. So that's 11 teeth on the tiny one scaling all the way up. Uh, to uh, the 34 teeth on the tall end. And this is a nine speed set of gears that you have here. And again, this is the derailleur, the Shimano Alivio. Uh, one of my favorites, I like it a lot. Uh, it's served me well for quite a long time. Uh, it's pretty good, uses a mechanical system for keeping the tension on there. Uh, so you do have a spot here for um, for a bottle cage. Bottle cage barely fits in here from what I'm told. <laughs> uh, so they got that sized up properly, which is nice because you don't have a whole lot of other space to mount anything. You don't have any provisions for a rack in the back of the bike. You would have to mount a rack, say on the seat post here and have it extend out. Um, but there are no spots on the frame itself. So if you want to carry something, you got this spot here. I suppose you could strap a bag into the triangle provided it fits. If you get a little front pack and of course a backpack, uh, so continuing on in the middle section, uh, up on the top you do have a, a fairly thin saddle. I mean, this saddle is definitely not what I call a comfort saddle. It's about, 
I'd say five inches wide on the footprint and a pretty darn athletic cut to it. So something like this is not really meant for sitting, it's meant for pedaling. It has a nice cut out here for your thighs to kind of get out of the way so you can get good uh, stress and you can get good tension on the pedals along with a nice long pedal stroke uh, in there. And it's a pretty small profile as well. You know, not a whole lot of gel coming up on here on this little vinyl cover. And the seat post is solid. So there's a rigid seat post there. So uh, this is not what I'd call a, a comfortable seat <laughs> by any means. Uh, you can customize it though. That's one thing that's nice about uh, the seat and the seat post in particular. Uh, this one is using a 30.9 uh, for the diameter of the seat post. You can change out the, where is it there? <laughs> you can change out this seat post really easily. Uh, any bike store can do it. And you can also get a seat post accessory that has some compression in it, like a suspension. Uh, it's a little tiny suspension, you know, about yay big or so. And that actually adds a lot, a lot of comfort to the equation, even if you keep the same seat. But you can totally change the seat because the seat rails that it sits on, those are more or less universal. So if you find a seat that you like, even something from an older bike, you can totally put that one on here as well as getting a suspension seat post at a local bike shop and then boom you're you're right on the road to comfort so if you're worried about comfort that's an easy thing to switch if you like this bike the provisions for a rack that's harder because you can't really change the frame because that's kind of set but if it comes to comfort don't worry that's easy fix uh, so continuing on towards the bottom so you do have a, a nice kickstand here with a telescoping end to it with a plastic on the bottom, uh, which is pretty good because the plastic isn't going to, you know, scratch anything from a solid metal kickstand. Uh, one thing about the kickstand is that it does come into contact with the crank. Uh, so if you're pedaling the bike backwards, or rather pushing the bike backwards, say maneuvering it out of your garage, you'll see the pedal kind of rotates back. And once it gets to the end, right there, you can see there's a wear spot. Whoop, you can see there's a wear spot right there from where the crank is coming to contact with the kickstand. So boom, once you get that down there, then pushing the bike backwards, the bike will kind of fight back a little bit and it won't roll easily. It's an easy fix. You just gotta, you know, lift up the back wheel and get the pedal out of the way. Then you can remove the kickstand and go back to your heart's content. But nonetheless, that's a little bit of a dance that you've got to learn uh, in order just to move the bike around. So that would be solved by putting the kickstand uh, towards the back of the bike, towards the back wheel. But again, that's another frame provision, kind of like the rear rack, that's really tough to change once you got it, really tough to change once you got it set up from the factory. So, you know, that's one of the compromises on the bike. But let's go ahead and jump into the electric system because I'm actually really excited about it. It's a newer system that I'm kind of getting the hang of. So with the electric system, this is using the Dapu uh, mid-drive motor. Uh, so Dapu has actually been making electric motors for bicycles for quite a few years. Uh, my personal bike had a Dapu hub drive many years ago, and boy, I wore that thing out. So I have a lot of, a lot of great things to say about Dapu as far as their products is, are concerned. This one I'm still kind of getting used to. This is a new motor system, so I'm still kind of evaluating it um, on this particular bike. Uh, so this is this particular motor unit is called the MD250. However, this one puts out 350 watts nominal and it peaks at about 720, if I remember right. Is that right, Alec? Yeah, absolutely. We've got a 15 amp controller and a 48 volt battery, so you get 720 peak watts. Great. So yeah, the, the motor, as you can tell, is kind of customizable by the, by the bike company uh, as far as the output is concerned and also the pedal assist levels and kind of how you interact with it a little bit. So if one Dapu feels good, then another one might feel a little bit better. You know, you could try them out. Um, personally, I like this one for the mountain bike. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, I haven't had a chance to go terribly high speed yet, mostly because of the terrain. I don't want to go terribly fast on something like this. It might lose control, so safety first, of course. But anyways, I'm kind of getting aside for myself. So the Dapu motor is a torque-based pedal assist on this one, uh, meaning that when you put tension on the pedals, that's when the motor system kicks in. It doesn't wait for you to actually cycle the pedals at all. Uh, it doesn't count that way. It can. Well, it does count that way, but that's not what it's relying on. It's relying on pressure uh, from the pedals or tension, if you want to call it that. Uh, so as the rider presses down, I better make sure it's turned off. Okay, good. <laughs> it's turned off. So as the rider presses down with their feet and puts some stress onto the cranks, this internal system inside the motor is measuring that and it kicks out power as a result. So this is the primary source of input right here on your pedals to engage the motor. And of course the motor drives this chain ring up here and that's what drives the bike as a result. So it leads for a very intuitive uh, sort of riding. So if you have a background in cycling, you're gonna love a torque-based pedal assist. It's gonna be nice. So as you pedal, that's what 
it really leads to a, a very natural experience because you're not hitting a switch you're not twisting a throttle it just feels more like a bicycle should feel in the first place there's not a whole lot to learn about it you start up the bike select your pedal assist and then it will pedal or it will engage when you pedal and when you stop pedaling it'll let you coast from there just the way that a bike should normally feel so it's kind of a, a torque based pedal assist system in a nutshell uh, but also they've made a good choice in the mountain bike uh, department because they have the motor mounted in the middle of the bike you kind of see as we back up here the majority of the weight for this bicycle is in the motor or sorry is in the middle because the motor is right there in the middle as well you have the battery uh, mounted on the down tube there also towards the middle of the bike and you can see where the rider sits that's where all the weight is right there dead center in the middle so because of that you can actually get a lot of control when you're maneuvering around some tight turns and tight corners uh, it's my opinion that mountain bikes should have a mid-drive motor on them because they feel so bet so much better uh, than using a hub drive system especially if you have the weight in the back with the motor and the battery that's it's it's tough you kind of lead to a little bit of an imbalance it almost feels like a boat in a way so if you're doing something lightweight honestly this trail isn't all that bad if you're doing something lightweight you could totally do a hub drive on a little bit of off-road but once you get into the technical stuff you'd want to start going this direction you'd want a bike that's more outfitted for mountain biking the way that this electric mountain bike is set up for okay so let's talk about the battery just a little bit so the battery is right here mounted on the down tube like i just mentioned uh, this is a really nice setting for the battery for a mountain bike but it also has some pretty cool features uh, there is a little bit of a button right there you press that and it kind of lights up to show you uh, just a little bit of an estimate as to what your battery life is on four little bars uh, but alec is going to go ahead and take the battery off of the bike it uses a unique key that you got a twist that has a spring load in it pull up on that lever and then boom the battery comes out this is a 48 volt 14 amp hour battery so that's a fairly good amount of, of capacity and power that you have in there uh, as well one last thing there is a little usb port if you want to charge your phone or a banana um, right there you can do it on or off the bike uh, so he's going to go ahead and slap that back in there so you start with the bottom end first and then kind of rotate the top one in give it a nice hefty click and then the battery comes out uh, so that bat that key uh, from the battery sorry that key that came out this is required to get the battery out if you just yank on it you're going to pull the whole bike with you eventually so that locks into position which is really nice uh, let's talk about the controls a little bit uh, so it does have a nice uh, really nice pretty display right here in the center of the bike I'll go ahead and press power on the remote to turn that on it comes up saying electric bike technologies uh, so this is a, a brand new system is that right yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we've been working on this firmware for these bikes specifically, and we've got it ready just in time for you to check out. <laughs> cool. So yeah, it does have a really nice blue motif to it, which kind of matches their, their logo and their branding that they have for their enterprise for both uh, electric bike technologies as well as the other brands that they have in-house here in Pennsylvania. Um, but it tells you quite a bit from the get-go. You know, you have your speed right here, kind of this automotive sort of uh, speedometer here, and it'll crank up with a little white bar as it extends to 5, 10, 15, and up to 30 miles an hour it displays here. Um, and it also has a power indicator that's not active because we're not going anywhere at the moment. Uh, up here you do have a percentage that shows you how much battery life you have left, as well as the pedal assist level, the main thing you'll be doing. Uh, so Alec is going to hit the pedal assist up and down there on the remote, and you'll see that that switches um, up to level 5 or down back to level 1 or 0 if you just want to pedal a bike. Uh, on the bottom, you do have a variable display which cycles through from odometer to trip set, uh, maximum, average, uh, some metrics like that. Uh, as well, uh, something that's kind of neat about this is that you can get into the settings menu by pressing the up or down arrows and holding them for a little bit. And inside of here, you have quite a lot of customization. Is that right, Alec? Yeah, absolutely. So we've set this up so that you can easily enter this menu and you have nice brief descriptions to show you how to, if you want to change your top speed setting off of the default 20 mile per hour speed limit, you can modify that in here in the settings. You can also modify your pedal assist setup. So by default, you have five levels of pedal assist, but you can open up in here and change it to say seven or nine levels of pedal assist and you can also change the ratio at each level so that if you want to customize how much of a boost you get at each level you can tweak that a little bit um, and all that is pretty simple in these menus here oh great so yeah that's something that's not terribly common <laughs> among the uh, the electric bike world is to find a company that will they'll ship it out to you you know fully legal 20 miles an hour and then if you wish you can as a customer 
uh, change that level. Uh, so that's up, that's entirely up to you. It's entirely up to your you know state laws and municipalities and everything. Uh, you know, put the ball in your court on that one. So yeah, uh, let's continue on. We'll talk about the throttle a little bit. Uh, so this bike does have the pedal assist, which is primarily controlled through, of course, the pedals, but also selecting it through the remote attachment. Tucked on the same side here is the thumb throttle. Um, so when you twist that throttle or push it all the way down, then that will engage the motor expressly. So you don't have to be pedaling in that case. You can actually just sit down, twist the throttle, and then boom, off it'll go. Of course, we're not trying to go anywhere right now because we need to keep it in camera and everything, but that's the electric system in total. So what you have as a total package is a hardtail electric mountain bike with a mid 48 volt mid drive system uh, that's torque based. So that leads to a really good package overall. Uh, I'm excited to get on the road and show you what it's really capable of. So let's jump in. All right, so uh, you'll get to see all of my acrobatic skills as I do a little, little bit of mountain biking here, one handed. <laughs> so I'm glad I have the electric motor to help me out because uh, otherwise, yeah, I don't know if I'd be doing it with one hand and no motor. We'll see, maybe someday. Uh, but yeah, I really like the torque sensor on this. It picks up pretty darn quick, uh, which is exactly what you'd want for a mountain bike. You know, this this isn't like crazy aggressive. You know, I'm not gonna do a whole lot of downhill with this kind of bike or this kind of system, but I think it's a really good match. You know, I think that's really what you're looking at is, is a bike that's very well fitted. Does it have like the best brakes or like the best uh, shifter? Like, well, no, it doesn't, but I don't know if, Oh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna utilize that on the trails uh, myself, um, ex only on rare occasions. So yeah, I think this is a really good choice, a uh, really good matchup. Let's go over this little wet spot here. Woo, don't wanna get too messy. <laughs> so yeah, the, the balance of the bike is definitely one of the strong points. Uh, I kind of like that it has a little bit beefier of a tire. You know, the frame is, really strong I mean it's aluminum frame so it does kind of you know transmit some of the vibration but that's okay because you have the 110 millimeters up front of travel uh, which is really good you know you can feel that kind of compress uh, which is you know exactly what you want it to do when you're going over some of these bumps so yeah I'd say that the throttle is I mean I'm kind of doing this one-handed so it's not uh, this exact representation isn't entirely accurate but nonetheless when I was riding with two hands the throttle is something I wouldn't really do on the trails. So if you're riding this bike to get to the trails, like on the street, then I would probably use the throttle. But when I'm off-road, I don't know, the throttle is definitely nice for like little tiny sticky situations, say if you run out of momentum. But by and large, that torque-based pedal assist, it's exactly what I want from a pedal assist. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it overall. All right guys, so here we are on the electric mountain bike. I've got it cranked up to level five pedal assist, and that's of course using the torque sensor here. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of throttle once I get to the last end, but I'm gonna rely on pedal assist for the torque sensor here. Uh, so let's go ahead and let her rip and show you what it does. Okay, at one point there I got it to about 18 miles an hour. This isn't terribly uh, difficult of a trail. It's got a little bit of bumps on there, but yeah, on the straightaway, I got it up to a little bit of speed. That was at full throttle. So yeah, this is pretty good. I, I really like the balance of it quite a bit. Okay guys, thanks for checking out the electric mountain bike from Electric Bike Technologies. It's been really fun. I'm really glad that I got a chance to take it off road. I think it really, really shined once I got it out in the gravel and on the dirt and the roots and everything. It was, it was pretty fun, so. Yeah, if you want to check out the full review for this bike, you can go to electricbikereview.com. 
Uh, while you're there, you can compare this with other bikes from the same company, from these guys in Pennsylvania at Electric Bike Technologies. You can also compare it to all sorts of other electric bikes. We've done over a thousand reviews by now. Uh, you can compare pricing and specifications, things like that. Uh, also, you can go there to participate in the forums if you want to interact with the community, ask a question, kind of hang out, things like that. So thanks for watching, guys. Ride safe.